everybody. I am very excited to be joined by some key members of the creative team of Talus Principal 2. Uh, I've got, I've got like butterflies. Uh, I've been waiting for this game for a very long time since it was rumored 800 years ago. Um, actually, uh, well, first off, introduce yourselves so everyone knows who you are, uh, and we'll go from there. Uh, hi, I'm Jonas. I um, I was a writer on this game, technically lead writer, which doesn't mean much. And uh, I co-wrote the original Talos with Tom Joubert. Hi, um, I'm Verena. I'm I'm one of the other writers on this game, technically speaking, a junior writer. And I translated the original Talos Principle into German, also a very important job. Oh. Yeah, I'm uh, Daur Hunski, one of... Uh co-founders of Crowd Team, um, you know, most of the time they call me chief creative officer there. And I was a project uh, um, director for the Taos Principle 2 and for the Taos Principle 1 too. You're all so humble about your titles. Be <laughs> proud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, I love the game. I am... Um... I want I want since this will be coming out on launch day, you know, we'll we'll avoid spoilers as much as we can. Um I think talking about this game is strange because I think talking about it at all will remove some surprise. So if you want to experience mm -hmm. the game, please go play it and then come back and watch this later. If you're curious, watch this and get some insight and then go play it cuz it's amazing. Um I'm about halfway through right now. Um, and I'll have more videos later once I'm finished. But let's start with this. So the, the rumors of this sequel had been swirling almost since the first Talos Principle. Had you always planned on doing a sequel or is this kind of, did you respond to demand or was this always part of the plan? Uh, can I take this one? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, well, not really, you know, like uh, the the first game was awesome and uh, we really enjoyed making it and it went incredible, you know, people really love it and felt the love behind it. But, you know, we had other stuff to work and then over the years, I'm talking about maybe even span of five years, uh, the, some ideas started to pile up and grow and then, you know, we didn't plan it. Well, at one moment, the, the amount of ideas was such a... We get a nice pile that kind of start forming a, a maybe beautiful picture or something that would be really exciting for us to take on on something. And then uh, Verena and Jonas uh, came with a. We had a special I don't know meet in Zagreb because guys are from Greece. They went flew over for a week like a few years ago in the middle of the other project we just brainstormed and tom was there too we brainstormed one week um that was like a seed for something that will become in few years uh, the taos principle to the core of, of story and universe for taos principle too and you know along during those three years we kind of start brainstorming about the, about the game structure visuals uh core game mechanics and you know so just fiddling nothing spectacular but it it cooked a long time because the first one was really i don't know very impressive and we didn't want to go out with something that would be you know would not be on par or something like that that was a big uh, uh fear and and a challenge and task yeah. the first game does the first game and road to gehenna contain a lot of setup for talos 2 right there's a lot of yeah. foreshadowing so we did put that in with the thought of if the story continues, this is where we want it to go. I had the pitch for what Talos 2 is now and for Talos 3 when we finished Talos 1 or Gehenna somewhere in there, right? Yeah. But there's a vast difference between, okay, we've set up where this is going to go thematically and then puzzle mechanics, actual story, like the difference between theme and then the, the yeah. actual mechanics of the story and all that. So while there was a lot there it took quite a long time to get to the point where we can say okay now we know precisely what we're doing and how it's going to work because that was the challenge going from you know the the sort of vague ideas that we had built up to the more specific uh things it's funny because all of that makes perfect sense because tell us one felt like a pretty complete package and in some senses it's like what did you leave unsaid but now playing this one, I'm like, oh, quite a bit. <laughs> like, quite a lot was unsaid. <laughs> was there any 
like theme wise, I guess, or mechanic wise, like what were you most excited about uh, when you started Talos Principle 2? I can say something about the themes. I think mm. thematically it was just this widening of the scope and, and kind of taking the next step because human beings don't exist individually, right? Like the uh, the plot of the first one is all about identity, but identity is really something that is just the first step. But you exist socially in a social context as, as a person. So it was very it was very important uh, for us to talk about this, this this greater context and to continue this idea of of hope of um, of belief in humanity and what it kind of costs to maintain that and um, uh, so that was the challenging and also very exciting thing to to go into those themes that we had kind of already started going towards in Gehenna a little bit but um, that you know we're, we're going to be uh, central here as for mechanics Davor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, okay, but mechanics aside, I, we, we found very nice amount of interesting stuff to prototype, and uh, we did that, and some are really exciting, so I, I, we were not afraid about the puzzles themselves. The What I was more concerned, or what I would like, what I was searching for is a visual identity, or, you know, how how to match this beautiful thing that uh, Kiratsis and writers actually in total um, proposed, you know, to re resurrect this feeling of uh, humanity civilization aiming towards something as together as, as you know, as let's say resurrection of the uh, of, of the feelings that that early science fiction books books had. Mm -hmm. And that was really, really, uh, you know, emotionally connecting with me. And I, I wanted to find uh, locations, you know, beauty in, in environments to match and to try to depict and, and, and match this kind of feel like something that is was supposed to be really grand and beautiful but is kind of decayed a little bit so we wanted to to, to match this also in visuals uh, and you know it took quite a bit but once we get to this uh, ruined concrete uh, brutalist style of things that was it you know that was a match uh, so so that was that done and you know and we protect a lot about the uh, you know uh, game mechanics and puzzles and but that was <laughs> more or less easy guys did amazing work there in my opinion i i think me and jonas we have a really strong belief in humanity like we're maybe not in such a good place right now yeah as a whole globally but i think we have all the ingredients to if we make the right choices to one day be in in a good place and and so i think there's a a real trend right now for dystopian narratives and science fiction um and uh what we really want is what i was looking forward to personally was to just be able to tell a story that fights against that that says you know what maybe we can do better in the future and just so that was what i was looking forward to to tell a different story one that has a slightly different outlook it's it's so interesting because like ever since i was like a teenager I've kind of had that feeling of waiting for humanity to sort of grow up and like move beyond all this stuff. And like so many themes in this game sometimes directly basically say that exact same thing. And I'm just like, ah, <laughs> simpatico. <laughs> and I love the framing, um, sort of like what you were talking about, Devor, where it was like classic sci-fi framing, um, like the fact that this story takes place so long after the fall of squishy humans. Uh, I love that they can look at like a flooded area and then say like, yeah, they uh, they did a lot of stuff that melted the ice caps and they kind of comment on that. Um, it's such a it's such a good framing device for kind of examining where we are right now in history. This game, I mean, I don't know exact like dimensions, but it feels much larger than the first game. Um, and, uh, more <laughs> ambitious as well. Cause it has like many characters and people are walking around and exist, you know, <laughs> uh, what were, were there any like big challenges when it comes to like getting that scale, realizing characters, exploration, all that kind of stuff? Well, we are Can guilty, I... you know, like that's probably really, really, Verena. Can I just say, if you, if you looked at our faces just now, you saw me and Jonas going like, yes, it's bigger. Yeah. And then... And then Honsky going like, I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No. Um, yeah. It, it's he is really also weird. at fault. He is also <laughs> at fault. We are all yeah. at fault. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, it is. It was a really huge challenge for the team. We're not a big team. And we really tried to, 
you know, execute something epic. And uh, well, maybe it wasn't that epic in the beginning, but it kind of grew between me <laughs> in between. Um, it is much, much, much bigger than than the original game. In, yeah. in everything is scope. In I don't know. Uh, it feels grand. While well, the first game feels like you know, um, small haiku, very, very, um, I don't know, small but beautiful. This one is. I hope that it's really beautiful. I think it is, but it's much larger in, yeah. in all of that it achieves. And in production wise, it's like, I don't know, three, four times di more difficult to, to make really, mm. it's really, really much, much more difficult to do, to make, but you know, we somehow put it all together. Right? Be you know why? Because I have, I, I need to say that the team and the people is like, sp I'm speechless being able to work with these guys, humans, uh, both on professional and personal level. That's that's just just a joy. Every day, they feed me with with love and joy, and 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 we all you know put a gazillions of uh, gallons of uh, love there, and hoping that that will be felt at the end. Well, I feel it. <laughs> um, I mean, I think that that comes across. There are there are some moments so far where the scale is like. Uh, I mean, well, I want to talk about that actually. I've had a lot of wow moments while playing. I don't really want to spoil any of them, but like. A lot of the new areas, just like video game, like, oh my god, look where we are, like, getting into a certain area. I'm like, okay, this is huge, you know, stuff like that. But some of my biggest WoW moments have been smaller moments. And what's so effective in this game, I think, is that I, I have a WoW moment that's a WoW moment with a puzzle mechanic. But the same puzzle mechanic also has, like, massive story implications. It, this would be easier if I could spoil the mechanic I'm talking about. But I think, you know, it's like... You yeah, know. yeah, we yeah. Um, <laughs> Melville and all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, kind of changes the the game a little. Um, but like while you were developing, do did you have any wow moments, either writing it or like testing a mechanic you didn't think would work or anything like that that you could think of? Because this game had a lot of moving parts for us as the writers, like in in between especially like about a year ago or so there was a moment when i personally was thinking oh, oh my god what's what are we doing um not because i thought that we had written something bad but because there were just so many parts that i had real trouble seeing the whole mm -hmm. and i was a little bit afraid of it and then at some point we got like the first builds that we could actually like walk around in, like see the continuous the entire game world as a whole and i was like yep yeah. Yeah, that works and it's incredibly gorgeous and i think since that coincided with this moment of personal uncertainty of whether we could pull this off that for me was a very 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 good moment yeah i love Same that here you you know um we always write down for example for core game mechanics uh, some stuff and uh you know even for for example for the first game um i came across this idea of uh connectors and and you know, guiding the light beam through the labyrinths when my son was very little at that time and he played like a iphone game that mm -hmm. had that something similar to that in 2d i still have that game on my my phone today and uh that was just like oh that would be awesome if you put put it in 3d you know like so stuff like that i don't know it just happens accidentally and i i rec i at that moment i kind of said oh that was nice something clicked and uh, similar stuff, uh, uh, you know, um, you will see the mechanics that are in front of you, but some stuff that was that you already uh, have seen, um, you know, uh, give much more than you thought they would give in the beginning, right? Yeah. They, they, they become much more interesting as you try to combine them with the other stuff. It's like a chess figure. So like you say, I know, pawn or whatever, horse, okay, it moves in L. Yeah, but when you combine it with you know, other interesting patterns of movement, then it becomes like, a, wow, you know, this is like a canvas where you can really uh, paint some interesting puzzles and stuff. So you, you, you cannot, uh, as you try to think about the new stuff, you cannot predict how far it would, you know, how much potential does that have? Sometimes potential is not great, uh, but sometimes you cannot even scratch, uh, you know, the surface of, of possibilities. Mm -hmm. for some stuff and um, in this game we kind of change the structure a bit so it's not like a one continuous uh, curve ramp ramp up you know as it was in Talos 1 but we have like many smaller ramps like so like like so, so yeah. structure 
And uh, I don't know, it, it, uh, for us, it was a big challenge because the, the original game had really praised this ramp up thingy, um, you know, by critics. There's like, you know, like an example of how it should be done uh, because it's slightly introduces and become harder. And at the end, it becomes really hard. But we, we kind of challenged that, you know, still we thought that for this game, it would be uh, good to try something else. Although we could write on the old formula, we kind of, we didn't know, but now we are very satisfied that we went this way and it's a little bit different structure, but I think that it works. It, it keeps you interesting. You never know what you will, what next uh, island will bring, you know, or yeah. island, uh, puzzle cluster, however you want to call yeah. it. But uh, so I, I hope that it will, it will, uh, the people will, will feel that, that it, that it also works uh, the same. As the worst first game did, I think they will. Like I love it personally. I was just, as you said, the kind of saw wave. The saw wave is going up too, you know. But like, I actually like going to a new island and like getting introduced to a new tool. And the first few puzzles are like, you know, easy. But like, they're teaching you that new tool, and then like the fourth puzzle, you're like, okay, but how do you use that with the other five tools <laughs> that you have? And then it's like, okay, cool, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Uh, I think it's great, and it keeps the pace really solid. Like I, it's it's a complicated, intense puzzle game where you vacillate between doing puzzles and reading intense hardcore philosophy, and it feels like a one more turn game. Like I never want to stop. I just keep going and going. I don't know. It's pretty wild. <laughs> um, <That's> very cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel about it. I don't know. I think that other people will like it as well. For me, I think it was, um, it's a, this is the common one, I guess, when working on stuff. So it was working with the actors uh, because the text is just text for so long uh, and it's all in your head and, and you need them to become people uh, because yeah. that's such a big part of the emotional experience. It was the same with Talos 1. Um, d uh, directing Aaron Fitzgerald, who played um, Alexander Drennan in the first one, is still like etched into my memory because it was such a powerful experience um, because... It, it was very moving. It was it was uh, kind of you didn't know what to say after some of those takes because they were so emotionally intense. Yeah. And uh, we had that again with this game where there were just moments that felt so beautiful because suddenly it was coming alive and, and you knew that, oh, now I know it's going to work. Now I know that I'm going to care about these people. And um, we brought in some kind of we did some unusual eclectic casting like we just brought in. We wrote for specific people in mind and then hope we would get them. Um and and it felt very good when they performed the parts and you were like yep this is good we did not fuck up yeah <laughs> um and uh, it was also i have to mention it was very moving to go back to um to the two actors from the first game uh and to to do new lines with Elohim and to have um obviously Athena in the game as well and yeah uh just working with those people again after almost 10 years and um and with them having kind of a, they, they value the work, they value Talos and, and you know, that felt really good that it, they didn't like phone it in or, you know, ah, it's just another job, but it kind of, they, they, they felt that there was some significance there and that feels good when you're doing this kind of thing. Yeah. I love, I love having multiple characters like this. Like I'm already dreading the end of the game. Cause I feel like I'm going to miss my friends, you know, like Yakut and stuff, especially are like, and Byron and everybody like they all feel like regular people which is really mm -hmm. nice like you could specifically is not the kind of character you see in a lot of video games he's like this quiet introverted nerd <laughs> and it's like you don't see that represented often <laughs> like I don't know or I don't yeah, know whatever. I, 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 I'm so <laughs> glad you like Yakut because we wrote that for um adam green and we were like I hope we can convince him to do it because mm. uh, we thought he'll bring this kind of just kind of quiet humanity to the part. And and it's just a guy. He's like a really yeah. likable, pretty ordinary guy who's just kind yeah. of trying to muddle through and he's not sure about stuff. And and we wanted him to represent kind of just normal humanity, right? Right. Um, and, and when that worked and, and we played it in the game, that felt so good. <laughs> well, it was funny because like, because he's so different from what I'm used to in, in voiceover performances, like when he first started talking, I was like, oh, you know, and now he's like my favorite guy because I'm just like, oh, you little sweetheart. Like, what do you, what do you have to say? <laughs> like, um, was it was it challenging writing for so many more characters? Did you miss having like a voice of God that 
kind of could say whatever Elohim, you know, whatever he wanted or um, because, you know, Alexander was talking from the past. So there was not as much interaction. You couldn't, you know, influence the speaking characters as much. Did you miss that or is it challenging, liberating to have so many characters to bounce off of? Bit of both. Mm. I would I would say like having Elohim is very easy having a character like Elohim there, which is why a lot of games tend, you know, yeah. it's, it's a very, it's a very common type of kind of role. And, um, but also I feel like we explored a lot of what you can do with Elohim in the first game. And then I really like his role in the second game. Yeah. I really like that, what he's like now. Um, but I, I don't think I would want to do an, I mean, okay. I have some ideas, Talos three, but apart from that, <laughs> um you're killing me uh, but that's something else um but but i wouldn't want to redo the first part you know yeah. this, the same kind of antagonistic godlike voice and so on that's kind of tiresome and the 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 other npcs can kind of fulfill a similar function in a lot of ways with the you know, commenting or explaining things so that felt okay um but it was a challenge i think to wrangle so many characters uh, yeah it was a challenge to wrangle so many characters because it's a joy to explore all these themes through so many different voices but um then again you always have to be certain that you're not just telling the exact same thing again from a slightly different viewpoint which can very easily become very boring so that's that's what made it challenging like is this too close to the other characters is this right are we really bringing something new to the table but on the other hand there's like the possibilities were so endless and we could really say, you know, I, I want to explore what it's like to be a robot too, who wants to have a different voice pack or... Right. I love and... that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think that, that that nails it. And like this, this game and the first game had did a good job at that where it was it really felt like you were getting a lot of different perspectives uh, from different people Um sort of like on the internet but a little more civil <laughs> at least in this case most of the time um i want i'll pin that for a second because i have a question relating to that in a moment when we get into the philosophy section of this interview but uh before we move into that i did have a couple of more kind of gameplay and mechanical questions were there any puzzle ideas or mechanics that you had an idea for that didn't work out because like there's so many new tools in this and every new one, I'm like, of course, like, this makes total sense. But I couldn't have thought of it beforehand, you know, like, you know, I don't yeah, want to yeah. say any of them, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one, one of them, um, we had one um, cluster that didn't end up in the game. I kind of like it. Some people really do, but it was not fitting with the other stuff. We also mm. have one one other thing that we didn't fit. I hope that we will bring it one day um to life somehow because all of both of these two things were really good in my opinion um but it wasn't fitting you know uh, somehow and then we had to to take it out replace it with with the uh, with the new one and guys uh, had few takes um you know thinking about brainstorming about the possibilities selected one implemented tested it was good and then 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 it re that one was replaced um I also think that that one could work in some other circumstances, but that's for another story. And actually, it didn't take us that much to to get the puzzles right. The rest of the game, production, you know, story, translations, voiceovers, um, just huge amount of assets needed to to build a, such a huge world, almost open and in yeah. all kinds of stuff, like uh, really, really difficult to produce art stuff uh, that took us a, a, a lot of time too and of course uh, sorry but you know uh, adopting to the new technology because we're like 20 years developing our own engine right and then we switched to unreal that that took that took a while too yeah is this unreal 5 or 4 this is actually 5.2 and not only Ooh. that but we are using all the bells and whistles of that technology the latest the sharpest stuff that everything they have be one of the first guys first who actually published a game using that like mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, uh, streaming stuff uh, like uh, virtual shadow maps virtual textures uh, nanite lumen you know all the the stuff the best stuff that they have that we, we push it to, to max that's how it need, needed to be open worlds a lot of stuff yeah yeah 
That's, looks great, that's... runs great. Yeah. My wife oh, came through cool. and she was look, watching me play and she was like, this game is gorgeous. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> really good. Um, all right. Now for the fun stuff. This game, I'm just kidding. This section is just silly. But um, this game has got a lot of philosophy in it, uh, which I love. Um, do you guys, are you all like doctorates in philosophy or something? This is like smart stuff. I love it. <laughs> um. Well, Tom Joubert does have a degree in philosophy, actually. Okay. <laughs> um, he's the only one. Um, <laughs> well, you and, fooled um, me. The rest of us are just um, interested. Um, I, I firmly believe that philosophy isn't something that, you know, belongs purely in, in academia. It's uh, something for everyone to consider and think about. And uh, possibly the fact that it has become so academic is it's to its detriment, honestly. Oh, yeah. so, uh, and... You're doing a great service bringing it to, to the normal folks. <laughs> I think normal people discuss it all the time. They just don't call it that. Yeah, you know, exactly. Sure. Exactly. That I wanted to say that, you know, like we, uh, you know, common game developers, we, we brainstorm, you know, during our lunch and, you know, stuff like I don't know, future technology, AI, God, civilization, culture, whatever, right? Everything that, that that's every, you know, that, that's um, in our hearts and thoughts. And we do that commonly, usually uh, as, I don't know, curious people, right? And uh, those guys are specialists in having the abilities to put that into some amazing words and stories and we just go sit here and do this <laughs> enjoy it yeah both games kind of play with the format of the internet like there was gehenna in the first one and the message board system in milton library and uh this one has you know you're constantly streaming and you're talking to people which i love um do you think that the internet was good <laughs> net negative, net positive for humanity. <laughs> Is it like the A bomb? Are we have we destroyed ourselves with the internet? Okay. I probably have the strongest feelings about this. Um <laughs> this is this is I find this very difficult because I am generally very strongly of the opinion that you know technology is what you make of it, right? Yeah. Like, and, and we can use anything responsibly and well, and we can use it badly, and that mainly depends on uh, political and economic circumstances like what is what is the system set up to do the technology will enhance that or you know in in some way or, or at least it will behave according to those rules um sometimes i have to admit i worry that the internet came along at the worst possible time <laughs> um to sort of really kind of um turbocharge the sort of atomization uh, of of people under the current stage of capitalism where where things are really kind of people are at each other's throats and everyone is you know looking out for themselves and it creates all kinds of really weird incentives in 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 how people behave um so that's frightening uh, at the same time, the potential is there, right? The potential is there for it to be something incredibly useful and helpful. And um, it has become, um, what did Cory Doctor say, and shittified. And, and that's <laughs> probably a big part of the problem. Um, but but it, that doesn't mean that we should kind of forget the tremendous... Um, possibilities that it offers us in terms of access to information, but also just to be able to talk to each other. You know, it used to be that if someone you love went to another country, it was barely possible to communicate with them. Yeah. And now you can just, you know, talk with video. That's amazing and and wonderful for a lot of people's lives. Um, but, you know, it, it it depends on what we do with it. But I do fear that it it kind of pushes in certain directions right now that are socially um yeah very negative uh, it's tricky same i have kids to grow grown adult kids well uh -huh. 18 20 and uh i see both positive and negative side of things of course uh they're different they have different lives than we did but for example if i compare their lives with for example my grandma's life she she lived on uh, on a village right peaceful quiet life mm -hmm. my kids already have like five times more information that she had in in the whole of her life right yeah so that also thinks makes something you know like it, the, the life is much much richer but at the end i kind of still hope that uh humanity all will choose 
the good stuff at the end after this first i don't know first uh, baby steps um will be i don't know uh will be gone um mm -hmm. and we will i hope that uh, yeah I, I i cannot see anything else but positive future for humanity that's how i am i love so, that that must be nice i mean kind of along those lines like how important do you think a sense of humor is in the face of reality i mean like a lot of the characters sort of allude to kind of an existential absurdist sort of um mentality i think where it's you create your own meaning in the face of things and part of that is having a sense of humor i think do you think that am i reading am i putting that into it or was that there <laughs> this is something that i'm very passionate about because um for two reasons um one thing is that i think no matter how dark the story is that you're trying to tell and tell us too i think is is not a dark story but in general um then humor adds yeah. yes it does but it, it is trying to be hopeful it's trying to have hope rather than fear of the future um but uh humor acts as contrast like if you want to have something truly emotionally engaging and and sad then um it's a bit like you know, like colors. You can't see proper darkness without having having light, having white. So um, I think, in that sense, just on a very I don't know physical level, um, humor is is very important. If you have nothing but unrelenting sadness in a story, then it numbs the audience. Like mm -hmm. you, people stop being able to absorb it because they just get pummeled by by all these these dark by all these negative emotions and then and so you kind of have to have a palate cleanser in between in order for people to be able to absorb more i think even in the darkest of moments a human being will try to lighten not not the entire time but people will still laugh and they will sing and they will tell each other stories and they will find joy in life even in the darkest of times even if it's just for a moment and and so i think humor as a as an outlet as a as a way of just cheering yourself up even if, if that's the only thing that you can do in that moment that is something that is very inherent to to human nature and so i think if you tell a story without any kind of humor in it you're just not telling a realistic story love that yeah, I agree. I think it's just it's 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 humanizing for both in art, but also in real life. It's like clinging to your humanity by saying, "I'm not just misery." There's something else to me. Yeah. Um, also, I hope we get technology to upload ourselves into robot bodies while I'm still alive, because <laughs> seems like fun. I want to live forever in a cool robot body. <laughs> um, it would be nice to live forever. I agree. Um, mm -hmm. uh, to live forever. <laughs> me. Wait. <laughs> yeah, life is good. <laughs> yeah, life is more. Good. There's mm. more joy to be had than misery, I find. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, last question. <laughs> do you think we've sort of already answered this, but you know, whatever. Uh, do you think humanity is capable of growing up? Does humanity stand a chance? Are we screwed? No, no, we can. No. I, we're not screwed, and I think we can grow up because we are still rational human beings. Uh, we still are the masters of our own fate. And uh, even though we exist, I mean, that's something the game is about, right? It's yeah. how do we how do we take control of um, the mechanisms of history? That's very difficult. It is, I think, the single greatest challenge in human history is that it's it's not any technology. It's not any anything. It's just how do we take control of our own fate? Um, but it can be done. We've overcome other things uh, before. Uh, as a species, we, if you look at where we used to be and where we are now, uh, we have made enormous strides forward, yeah, yeah. Uh, not just technologically, but socially, spiritually, philosophically, everything. Um, and I, I think we can keep doing that, but I do think we are at a very dangerous point in human history because we have atomic weapons um, and a system a socio-political economic system that produces one crisis after the other. And mm -hmm. so many crises all bundled together with a bunch of atomic weapons is very scary. Hopefully people's sanity will eventually prevail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like an optimist forever. And I think that humanity always uh, wins at the end. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it was 
uh, like that in uh, uh, throughout the past, our our history as as a species, and maybe the most dangerous thing in my world or my I don't know could be AI more dangerous than at atomic bombs. I don't know. We'll see about that. Maybe not, but uh, we'll see. This is something like uh, a new 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 revolution evolution, or we'll see what what the, if that will kind of have a big impact on, on humanity but it will take a few decades for sure to see what where that's going yeah it will not be tomorrow yeah and i mean with all of these things like will we learn from the past we have to try yeah um, we have to try and we certainly don't have to not wait for the people who are in charge to learn from the past <laughs> because they're not learning uh, here here i really hope that we can like i want to as i said i i hate nihilistic and dystopian narratives i i want to believe and i think what frightens me is that we've we've told ourselves so many of those stories that we've kind of forgotten how to believe in that as a as a whole like there's this kind of this this global meta narrative where we are where everybody just believes that we can't do better because we've been told so often that we can't do better and as a result nobody tries to do better um i mean that's on a that's on a human on an individual level um yeah. like people on the ground are just saying you know that's just the way it is we're just yeah. cursed to to always make the wrong choices because i've seen it on star trek last week <laughs> and um but i i hope that we can learn uh to improve ourselves because as i said i think all the the ingredients are there like i, I believe that human beings are, can be good and that like things like altruism and um are inherent somehow in us we just need to find them again yeah and uh yeah i i remember um, a conversation that i had like several years ago with my father who's a software developer and um, he said his biggest fear is artificial intelligence mm. and i said but why and he said because um when it's going to be developed it's going to be developed by the military and it's going to try to kill us and he's not wrong but right. i i said yeah but but what, what if it wasn't yeah it doesn't have to be yeah because again he had this i hope he doesn't listen to this anyway <laughs> um he had this uh just this automatic assumption that it would go badly because the people who made it are bad right there in the game the part of the game i'm in right now there are some conversations along these lines happening and i really appreciated the lines like that where it was like why does everyone assume that they're cursed and they're doomed and stuff and it's like it's just kind of perpetuating a story you know but i mean i think kind of to close things out here i know i've kept you for a long time uh i think games like this and art like this are so important and like tricking people into thinking about philosophy <laughs> i mean they're already thinking about it so it's not even a trick but like packaging it in a in in play you know alexandra drennan was right like packaging it in play like this is just such a powerful way i think to deliver and integrate these kinds of thoughts and messages into people and uh i truly you're making the world a better place with these games i honestly think so and so it's an honor to sit and talk with all of you and um to get to play these games um thank you so much um, well thank you. thank you for playing them no. and there's no <laughs> point you. if nobody engages mm. Yeah, you know, whenever, and there's really, really, you know, one day in a year when I kind of need a little bit more inspiration or something that I want to read positive, I just go there on Steam or wherever and then read a few comments from the people playing Talos or something. And that's mm. like, I'm full for another year. It's, it's yeah. just, you know, emotion is overwhelmingly positive and that, you know, that makes, you know, all, all of all of your efforts, uh, however much, whatever you are trying to put into it, like ten times more uh, powerful. You 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 know you you get all of the win all the win that you need by just you know hearing people loving you know. And this is our goal. So 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 uh, to 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 have as many people trying to um, I don't know feel what we feel felt and what we we had in our hearts and minds while creating this game because i think that it matters 
And yeah. especially, you know, this feeling, this this stroke my chord, especially, you know, when I was younger, I read so, you know, old classic sci-fi books, you know, Simo, Clark, whatever, you know, just magic stuff. And I was dreaming about beautiful sci-fi stuff in the future, right? And the last few decades, it's all, you know, they will eat us, destroy us, you know, <laughs> right. everything, you know, wrong. And they, they did, and this is a, a try or, you know, when, when guys were talking about elevating these memories that was like well yeah we need that i feel that i want that and that was and we tried to to make it beautiful uh i don't know that's that's i hope we'll see how people see it. but we knew i know that we put uh, a lot of love into it huge success from my perspective i think um Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. This was great. Dean. Thank you very much for having us. It was really, really fun. And it's really wonderful for us to see that people actually care. Um, you know, because you, well, you, so <laughs> you, know, you spend so many years locked in a room in your pajamas. Uh, <laughs> right. Trying to do something meaningful and you're not sure what you're doing. And um, and then, you know, uh, it's nice that it kind of matters. Yeah. I mean, this is an antidote for nihilism, I think. You will have to be careful and smart and curious. But above all else, you will have to be human. <laughs>